The Fed raising rates by 25 basis points, or a quarter of one percentage point. Interest rates now at the highest level in some 22 years. Let's get some uh, reaction perspective from Richard Clarida, former Fed vice chairman and global economic advisor at PIMCO. Uh, Richard, welcome. It's good to have you with us, uh, as, as always. I think in the statement, the, the key word here, is, or phrase maybe, is that the, the, the chair and the, and the committee refer to the extent of policy firming that may be indicated, not whether more policy firming is indicated. Exactly. And, you know, that language was introduced in the June uh, statement, and I think at the time was viewed maybe a touch uh, dovish. And then, of course, in the June meeting, we had the skip, but we had the more hawkish elevation of the dots. No dots today. But I think when you look at statements, there is a decision to leave wording unchanged. And I think uh, I take that as the, the chair wants to leave all of his option open for the rest of this a year, and I'm sure we'll hear something on that in the press conference. One of our panelists uh, a few moments ago uh, referred to the, to the idea that the, that the Fed was sort of behind the curve. Um, do you agree with that or, or not? Or have they gotten out from that? Uh, the Fed is not behind uh, the curve. They, they have moved rates at a, at a very brisk pace in the last 15 months uh, into what they and we think is restrictive uh, territory. They've pushed back on the idea uh, that they're on the verge of, of, of cutting. Uh, I think the Fed is, is, is close to where they're going to need to be to put inflation on a path down towards uh, 2 uh, uh, percent. But again, the chair, I think, will leave his options uh, open uh, to go at the September meeting, to skip the September meeting, uh, to go later uh, in the year. In the statement, Rich, the Fed repeated that tighter credit is likely to weigh on activity. We haven't seen too much of that uh, between the last meeting and today. And I'm wondering, in terms of the long and variable lag effects, what you think the number one concern, the number one effect is in your, in your mind? Is it tighter credit? And is that mainly from the banking crisis? Or is it from the rate hikes? Um, I think it's a combination. Uh, I, I think tighter credit, historically, there is a lag. You are actually seeing data that the number of loan applications being turned down uh, ha has moved uh, up. Loan growth is basically stalled. I would expect some of the additional regulatory measures that the Fed's going to put in place after SVB is, are going to tighten credit uh, conditions. Uh, and if you look at other measures, including the, you know, the SLUS uh, loan officers survey, that's also uh, showing it. So these things do take time, but, but I do think we'll, we will start to see uh, additional uh, slowdown in the economy from these conditions. Knowing that the Fed is in the FDIC will meet on Thursday to vote for an initial uh, round on the new uh, bank regulations, Rich, do you think that that is in, in mind when the Fed is going to, you know, when Jerome Powell takes that podium and talks to reporters and talks to the world about what their intentions are, will that factor in, knowing that there are those new capital requirements to come and that will be an additional uh, tightening on, on credit? Yeah. Here I would distinguish between two related but distinct measures. Mm -hmm. There's the so-called Basel III uh, measures uh, that they'll, they will be talking about, and those would be phased in and there would be a comment period. I think more front and center this calendar year will be after the SVB and related disruption in the spring. We heard commentary from Vice Chair Barr and other Fed officials that they're going to take a second look, an additional look at capital and liquidity standards for banks in that 100 billion plus uh, category. And they can do that without you know, an extensive comment period as they will with Basel uh, III. They can do that under existing uh, statutory authority. And we would expect that to happen uh, as well. Where would you expect inflation and specifically core inflation to be, let's say a year from now? Well, here, I think I'm going to say both what I expect and what I hope. I do think a year from now that the Fed's preferred measure, uh, core PCE inflation, uh, will be in the twos. Uh, I think there's uncertainty about, you know, um, the path uh, there. Uh, we here at PIMCO are really uh, optimistic that we're going to start seeing some real improvements in the inflation data because, in particular, housing and rental inflation has slowed uh, uh, down. Uh, and I think there is good reason uh, to believe uh, that we will have core inflation, uh, you know, in July of next year, somewhere in the twos, probably north of two and a half, I would imagine, somewhere between two and a half uh, and, and three. And of course, the Fed, in its June projections, did have 
core inflation falling to 2.6% by the end of, of next year. So I think that's in line with their assessment as well.